Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for October 14th. October 14th is the 287th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 288th day in leap years with 78 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is ballistic. Ballistic is an adjective that means of or relating to the dynamics of projectiles or the science of the motion of projectiles in flight behaving like a projectile, <laughs> as if a projectile has a will of its own. Sometimes it seems that way. And from those descriptions then also comes to mean extremely and usually suddenly excited, upset, or angry, or wild, as in, she went ballistic. <laughs> ballistic. Yeah, that's mostly, it started out being about projectiles in flight and evolved from there. I would like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. We're probably going to have some outtakes on this one. <laughs> So stay to the end for those. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Remember that you can share this video with others with the link in your email, messaging, or social media. There's also a link in the show notes to the This Day in History playlist. And that way you can watch as many of them as you want to. <laughs> Binge watch them if you want to. And I'll also put a link up in the iCards up in the corner there to that playlist. And now let's get on with this day in history. And we're going to start in 1066 when the Norman conquest of England began with the Battle of Hastings on October 14th, 1066. On October 14th, 1322, Robert the Bruce of Scotland defeated King Edward II of England at the Battle of Old Byland, forcing Edward to accept Scotland's independence. On October 14th of 1586, Mary, Queen of Scots, went on trial for conspiracy against Queen Elizabeth I of England. George Eastman received U.S. government patent on his new paper strip photographic film on October 14th, 1884. This is the birthday of poet and playwright E.E. E. Cummings, born October 14, 1894. He lived to the age of 67. The Chicago Cubs clinched the 1908 World Series on October 14, 1908, <laughs> defeating the Detroit Tigers 2-0. This would be their last win of the World Series until 2016. This is the birthday of British actor Roger Moore, born October 14, 1927. Best known for playing James Bond in seven Bond movies, he lived to the age of 89. Germany withdrew from the League of Nations and the World Disarmament Conference on October 14, 1933. On October 14, 1947, Chuck Yeager became the first person to exceed the speed of sound. This is the birthday of English singer-songwriter and producer Thomas Dolby, born October 14, 1958. He has a pretty good discography and worked a lot with sound. I particularly remember him for a song called She Blinded Me With Science. <laughs> I'll put a link to that one in the show notes for you. He turned 62 in 2020. The Cuban Missile Crisis began on October 14, 1962, when an American reconnaissance aircraft took photographs of Soviet ballistic missiles being installed in Cuba. Martin Luther King Jr. received the Nobel Peace Prize on October 14, 1964 for combating racial inequality through nonviolence. On October 14, 1964, the Soviet Presidium and the Communist Party Central Committee each voted to accept Nikita Khrushchev's voluntary request to retire from his offices. <laughs> Truth is, he'd been falling out of favor over the last few years, and when the Cuban Missile Crisis, it was not just a crisis for Americans. Good for him that he agreed to voluntarily retire. 
Otherwise, we'd probably be reading his obituary instead. He was given a pension and allowed to live in an apartment in Moscow and also had a second part-time home outside the city. He wrote a lengthy memoir and somehow managed to get that smuggled out of Russia, and it was published in 1970 as Khrushchev Remembers. I bet he does. <laughs> I haven't read that yet, but I, I think I might. Get me a copy. You can find those online. If I, if I can find an Amazon link for it, I'll put that in the show notes as well. You can well imagine that the U.S. government was very interested in what Khrushchev remembered. <laughs> He died the following September, 1971, at the age of 77. The first live TV broadcast by American astronauts in orbit took place on October 14, 1968, courtesy of the Apollo 7 crew. And I'm going to let that be it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. I always do. <laughs> As always, links to my research are included in the show notes, as is the playlist for my This Day in History series, and also in that corner up there. I have to look and see which corner it is. <laughs> Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this with others. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Is that right? I'm gonna have to look that up. I don't... So what we'll do is we'll just record another one, like it, and choose the one we like best. That sounds like a pretty ambitious project. Okay, just leave that part out. Not the first day, but the birthday. I guess the birthday is the first day. This is what happens when you don't clean up your script. <laughs> we might leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all that's going to go together or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Yeah, we're going to cut those out. Now, that'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up.